You can access this home page in a number of ways. You can come to this home page through a direct web link. You can access it through all yours, or you can access it through your intranet site. To log into the, the system for the first time, you need to use your payroll number as your username, and it'll be your full six digit payroll number. So if uh, you have any leading zeros, you need to include those. Your password for your initial login will be your full date of birth. Now I've logged in before, so it's going to just accept my password as I've set it. Um, but for your initial login, it'll actually prompt you to set a password for the system. We will be covering how to access recruitment, the jobs requisition page, how to create a requisition with types and options, completing a requisition, and sending a requisition. To navigate to the recruitment window, you come to the home bar and scroll down to recruitment. This opens you up into the job requisitions page. Within the job requisitions page, you can see all other requisitions that you are playing a role in. You might be playing the role of the hiring manager, you might be playing the role of the HR manager, or you might be playing the role of the interviewer. The next thing we're going to cover now is just how to create a new requisition. So you, you come to here to create new, and it opens up a number of options for you. The EBA requisition is to be used for all EBA vacancies. The express requisition would be used for all work experience, work experience applicants or walk-ins. The salary requisition would be for all operation, operational salary positions. The support salary requisition would be for all support salary requisitions. For the purposes of this video, we're going to use the EBA requisition as the example. Once selected, it gives you another few options that you can choose from. You can either copy an existing requisition. Now you would use this if you had a, previously requ a previous requisition you had created, which was of a similar role. You can browse families and roles, and you can use that to select from existing job templates that have already been created. Or you can create a new job requisition from a blank template. For this exercise, I'm going to use browsing families and roles. Underneath that selection, you then have the, op the option for selecting uh, the Woolworths tab. We can click that, and it'll expand out to show you all the templates that are currently available within our templates that have been pre-configured. Pre From here, for this example, I'm going to select a replenishment or recovery person or job. You can see here we've got the, the pre-configured job description and some of the key elements that would go into the ad that's going to show online. You can also see down here we've got the competencies associated with this role. Uh, the competencies for this one are attention to detail, collaboration, customer centric, disciplined, and that they've got flexibility. So basically you select the job that you're happy with, and then come down here and click on use selected. The job title is how you would like the, the job to be advertised. So for this one, because it's either replenishment slash recovery, I'm going to make it specifically re replenishment, and I'm going to add a store name. So I'll just put in a loo for this example. The due date automatically defaults to three days within the future. And this is the date that you expect the, the role to be posted by. The Woolworths Recruiter. Now you can start typing in here and in a second. It'll bring back, if you already know the, the recruiter that you normally work with, it'll bring back the selection there. You can also click on Find User if you're not sure. Click on Search 
and I'll bring back all the recruiters that are currently in the system. So for this one, I'm gonna use the HRBC for WA and select user. And that just completes in here. And then go to next. Okay, so this brings you into the requisition where we're gonna fill in a number of more details associated with the requisition. So you can see the first thing we've got here is the requisition ID. That pre-fills and just auto-picks the next available requisition ID. This is important if you need to come back to this requisition for whatever reason, um, and you'll be able to see this in your home screen, and I'll, you'll see that at the end when I've completed the requisition. We've got the approval due date, and now here we've got the targeted start date. So for this, we just pick, I'm just gonna pick a date in the future, and we're gonna hopefully have this person starting by the 26th of July. The hiring manager, now this could be yourself, this could be uh, someone else within your store, or if you're the HR manager or the recruiter, it could be someone in one of your stores. So I'm just gonna pick myself for this one, but I'll show you that we can search. Finds me, I just select. And it's now completed the hiring manager there. The hiring manager business phone. Whoops. The RAW recruit is pre filled from the page we had before. And you can actually edit it here. So if you accidentally, I don't know, type the wrong recruiter, you can actually change that if you needed to. The interviewer. So this is where you, you're going to tell the recruitment team who you want to interview. So again, you might be the hiring manager, but it might be multiple people here, um, or it could be someone else within your store um, who's actually going to be doing the recruitment. Um, so for the purposes, I'm going to pick another person within the system. Okay. And so I now mark that person as the interviewer. The next section we're gonna make here is the division and you can see that the, each of the compulsory fields here are marked with a red asterisk. So you have to make sure you complete all of those but obviously it's best practice if you can to complete all, all the fields. So the division I'm gonna pick here is Woolworths Supermarkets area. Now, because there's a lot of areas in the system, it's actually gonna load a search tool for us. And I'm just gonna put WA. Put all the areas that have WA. I'm gonna select one of the supermarkets areas within WA and click finish. We now select the store. Again, we've got the contains. And I can just put contains in a loo. Pick the supermarket and finish. Brand supermarkets, country Australia, postcode is six zero one eight. Justification, now this is uh, just the reason for the requisition, so I'm just gonna put vacancy. The cost center is 4313. Number of openings, so potentially I could be looking for a number of people, I'm just gonna leave it set to one for now. Oops, I made a spelling mistake there, so I'll fix that. Um, you can see here I can put the same as internal, so if I change something here, and put same as internal, it'll just automatically do that there for me. So I'm just gonna change that back. The employment type, so you can see here we've got a, a drop down selection of what employment type. I'm just gonna go part time for this example. Job function, at the moment it's just set for administration. Um, that's something that we're working on within the configuration of the system at the moment. Number of hours per week, we have a drop down selection here. And so this is obviously the estimated number of week. For part time, it might be a specific contract that you're trying to fill. 
for a casual, it might be estimated hours. Um, and so I'm just going to select 20 for this example. Availability roster required. Now this is where you, as the uh, hiring manager, you might put that I need weekend, oops, availability. You might put a specific roster, ideally that would help, um, but we're just putting the information here that the recruiter could use um, in the, the, the questions and the, the selection criteria that they put to filter applicants prior to sending them on to yourself. Desirable skills, again, you know, if you're looking for a particular skill set, you can type those here. And then any other hiring manager comments. You can see here the description that's going to be set for the, uh, for the uh, advert. It's got the job code from the one we cl clicked on in the previous screen. And we've got the currency that's set to Australian dollars. Um, this system actually will be used by our uh, New Zealand as well, and so it's got a few options in there as well. Um, but that's the reason for that selection criteria being there. Once you come to the bottom here, you can see you maybe have, don't have all the information, so maybe you needed to go back and find out a little bit more about the roster or something like that. You could save and close and come back to it. Maybe for whatever reason you've started one and realized I've made a mistake or I don't need to actually do it, so you close without saving. Or if you're happy with all the detail that's actually within the system and, and, and the, the requisition of you, as you've set it, you then simply forward it or send it to the, the recruiter that we selected above. So I just hit send to the recruiter. I can put some comments here if I wanted to specifically let the recruiter know something about the uh, requisition that I've just uh, created. I'm just gonna leave that blank for this example. You click send to recruiter. So you can see it then brings you back to your home screen where you started the requisition. And you can see this is the one we just created. Um, that I'm the hiring manager, that we're, the current step we're up to is initiate requisition and who it's currently sitting with, which is the WA recruiter. So as we discussed at the start, we've covered off um, navigating to the recruitment page, how to create a requisition, the requisition types, the requisition options, um, completing the requisition, and to send to the WOW recruiter or to the, whoever you've nominated as the recruiter, and uh, or and or to, to save for a later date to come back and complete a later, at a later date.